Welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how we installed an OSB subfloor into this trailer, but it only ended up serving as a template. I'll explain. So OSB, or Oriented Strand Board, which is basically wood chips and glue, had never been my first choice subfloor material, but it was cheap, like $28 a sheet cheap. So I convinced myself that this not very water resistant material would be okay for our trailer because we're not planning on driving it around. We're actually gonna park it on our property and eventually even build a carport type roof over it. So we're really never expecting it to get wet. But of course, expectations and reality don't often line up. My concerns about OSB were renewed by a viewer's comment on my last video, so thank you. And long story short, we ended up buying a completely different material on the other end of the price spectrum. And I'll tell you more about that in the next video. Even though this was a lot of work, I think this extra OSB subfloor step was really worth it. First of all, I wasn't worried if I made a mistake cutting a piece of OSB sheet because it's only $28. And secondly, we were able to use those OSB templates to go from 10 pieces of subfloor down to six in the final material. Depending on your confidence and skills, doing a subfloor template like this may or may not be useful. But for now, let's jump into this process, which was a really exciting milestone in this project. In the last video, I wanted to slide the sheet in just so I can do repairs to the aluminum shell. Now the trick is I need to jack this up enough so that I can slide that board underneath and then trace the contour. You'll definitely want to have a jack on hand if you're doing something like this. This is good on this side. So I need to cut a little bit off of here. This is the closest I've had to a floor since getting this, so we're very excited. I just learned how handy those little notches are in the speed square for holding the pencil and drawing a line like this. And now this should be the correct width. And this made it so easy to trace the curve. And then cut it out with the jigsaw. Here I'm still enjoying the fact that I can walk in the trailer. Oops. I didn't know it mattered for some floors which side was up. Expect to have to make a few more cuts here and there to make it fit better. The next piece is just straight, so I'm just measuring the width of the trailer in two spots to make sure. 91. You can see just how much the sides of the trailer move when it's not bolted down. So I was able to maneuver the subfloor into place, even though the shell itself sits on top of the subfloor. This was my favorite method of making the tongue and groove in the subfloor go together tightly. The next section overlaps the wheel wells, and so I'm cutting it in half so I can more easily maneuver and cut them to the right shape. This is one of the sections I was able to make as a single piece in the final subfloor. I was going to try to measure and cut holes for the wheel wells, but I'm just going to use the router. It's going to be a lot faster and a lot neater. I should have drilled a hole here and gone this way. I was pretty excited about using this router, but honestly it left too big a gap between the subfloor and the wheel wells for my liking. But since this ended up being a template, I was able to correct that in the final subfloor. The router, of course, couldn't reach all the way, so I used a handsaw to finish the cuts. This is a pretty exciting milestone. Ever since I got the trailer, I've been wondering when I could put the floor in, always optimistically thinking it's very soon, and now, I don't know, maybe it's almost a year later, and I'm just getting to it. So we have about half the floor in now, and actually at the wheel wells, the tabs here will be underneath the wood there. So. I'm gonna go buy some rubber strips to 
keep the aluminum away from the steel of the chassis and then we can actually lay down the rest of the floor. I'll buy some more floor as well. So I got this tub underlayment material from the hardware store and I cut this into thin strips to put on the steel. Giving it a quick wipe to make sure the adhesive sticks well and moving these out of the way so I can put rubber along the entire bottom of the wheel wells. I got some of this Gorilla Heavy Duty Construction Adhesive to glue those PVC strips. Just enough to hold it on there. And of course, repeat on the other side. August, where are you? Come here, come here. And since they're not secured, the sides of the trailer just move out so easily. So I was always having to lift it back up onto the subfloor. So this tab here isn't quite sliding underneath here. So I need to lift the whole shell up just to get that under and the wheel well in position. Fifty two, forty eight brings it right to here. All right, fifty two. This fourth piece is really straightforward and fits just between the wheel wells. And here, my weight on the OSB pinched the blade of the circular saw just as it was getting to the end of the cut. So now I have to cut it from the other side. Now I'm gonna put some rivets through the aluminum wheel wells we made into the channel of the shell. I'm going to secure this using some 3 16 inch aluminum pop rivets. Now that I've got one on each end, I'm going to measure and space out the rest of them. It would have been kind of nice to use some solid rivets here, but I was alone and it's actually pretty hard to reach the other side of this channel from inside the trailer. So I just use pop rivets. The fifth section is pretty straightforward as well, but just has two notches cut out on either side to accommodate a little bit of the wheel wells. Again, I cut this piece in half to make it easier to maneuver and place, but in the final subfloor, I was able to keep it as one piece. Just that one more section. All right, this last section, that's gonna be tricky with the curve. So I got this heavy duty cardboard box from Home Depot and I'm gonna try and use it to make a stencil so I know how to cut the subfloor to, to go around these curves. I feel like the best way might just be to do successive approximations and get it closer and closer and cut it down a bit further each time. This part isn't too bad, it just takes a bit of patience, and you'll see it took me several iterations before I got it just right. Two things I need to cut out. One is one of these old bolts that held this together. Unfortunately, I have to put this cable through the channel here, so I have to drill out some of these rivets, cut a little tab out, and secure these cables back there. There we go. So now these cables are in there and I just need to cut a notch in the wood once I make it to go around it. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna cut this in half because it's not wide enough anyway. Ideally, you'll be a pretty even line all the way around. So I'm to cut a little bit more off of there because it's not 
quite as thick there. Looking like they fit pretty well. I'm wondering if it makes sense to make this piece go halfway down this beam, and the same thing over here, and then one piece in the middle. Okay, that looks pretty good. So there's eight and three quarters. Eight and three quarters, yeah. Okay. I feel reasonably confident. That's about nine. I think we're pretty good. So because of the tongue and groove in this OSB subfloor, and also because it was the last piece I was putting in, I decided I had to cut it into three pieces to be able to fit it in, because I had no room to maneuver otherwise. So I did notice that on the corners, because the skirting bends in so steeply, that the cardboard template fit really well, but the three quarter inch subfloor did not fit as well because the bottom edge of it was then hitting the inside face of the skirting. There we go. <laughs> All right, last gap to fill. 50 and an eighth. Okay, we got 50 there. That's the last piece of subfloor for the whole trailer. I really recommend that you check to make sure that the doors open and close without any problems. At one point, I must have distorted the shell a little bit, putting in some of these last pieces of subfloor, and this door was rubbing so heavily against the frame that I could hardly open and close it. But I think it was when I pushed in that last central piece and made it fit really tightly against the previous pieces of subflooring that the distortion occurred. And then walking around in the trailer, that wiggle is way back out a bit, and then the door worked again. It's been nearly a year since we've been able to walk across this trailer. When we first got it in June 2023, we gutted it and we've been having to balance on the chassis ever since. And so it feels incredibly satisfying to finally be able to walk across this entire area. And it actually feels like a space now, not just a, a skeleton of a camper trailer. Now with the subfloor in, we can start playing around with the layout ideas that we have. And I'm really looking forward to that part. Aside from figuring out the layout, the next big step is going to be running all the electrical. So we need to figure out what size breaker box we're going to have and where we're going to run all the different cables. So again, I was saying all this thinking that the subfloor is done, not knowing that we were going to soon replace it with a much better material. Even though this is just the subfloor down, I don't want it to get trashed because you see just how much dirtier this one got because it was in here longer while we were working on it. So. I'm gonna try and keep it a little bit cleaner. Pretty satisfying. So that's how we got it all to fit in. And then the next video will show you what material we replaced it with and also how we secured the shell and the subfloor to the chassis. Overall, this part of the project cost about $160 for the six sheets of OSB and it took about 10 hours. So that's it. I hope this was useful and see you next time. Hey, I'm Dan, and my mom and I bought some land out in the countryside to build a house. And to help with that, we thought we should have a trailer. So why not renovate a 1949 Spartan Manor? So if you want to see how these go, plus some other random DIY stuff, subscribe and follow along.